Hello everyone. Myself Ashima Mittal, Assistant Professor Maharaja Agassiz School of Management, Maharaja Agassiz University, Pati. In this presentation, I am going to discuss about one of the very important topics of Indian Contract Act 1872, and the topic is of payment. Payment is a very important part when we study about Indian Contract Act 1872 in business law. In this presentation, we are going to cover the following contents shown in the slide. Meaning of payment, types, essentials, duties of bailey, rights of bailer, duties of bailer, and rights of the bailey. So let us start our topic with the meaning of payment. So payment is a delivery of goods by one person to another for a purpose upon contract. And when the purpose is accomplished, the goods shall be returned back according to the directions of the person delivering them. As per section 148, Indian Contract Act 1872. So, what is payment? What exactly happens in payment is that some goods are delivered by one party to another for a particular purpose. And when this purpose is accomplished, the goods are delivered back to the owner. Let us understand the meaning of payment with a very simple example. When we give our clothes to tailor or stitcher, suppose A gives a piece of cloth to B to stitch a suit. So this is a payment. How? Because A delivers some goods to B for a purpose, and that purpose is stitching. When the suit will be stitched, it will be returned to A. So this entire transaction is known as contract of payment. One who delivers the goods or one who is actual owner of the goods is known as bailer, and one to whom the goods are delivered for some purpose is known as bailey. Moving on to the types of payment, bailment is divided into two types on the basis of reward and on the basis of benefit. On the basis of reward, we further have two new types and that are gratuitous payment and non-gratuitous payment. On the basis of benefit, we have three types, bailment for the exclusive benefit of the bailer, bailment for the exclusive benefit of bailing, and bailment for the mutual benefit of bailer and bail. So let us understand the meaning of each one of them one by one. Firstly, coming on to the on the basis of reward, First is gratuitous payment. So gratuitous payment is when the goods are delivered for free to someone for a purpose. For an example, if your friend needs your car for going to Chandigarh. So what you do is you provide him with your car for going to Chandigarh. And when he will be back, he will return the car to you. Just because he is a friend, you might not be asking for any money from him. So that is known as gratuitous payment. Now in this particular transaction, if you see that A is delivering a car to his friend for a purpose, and that purpose is going to Chandigarh. When the friend will be back, the car will be returned to A. So this is a contract of payment. Gratuitous because A is doing or delivering the goods for free without any reward or compensation. There is no reward or compensation for A in return. So that becomes a gratuitous payment. The entire opposite is non gratuitous payment. In non gratuitous payment, what happens is that a party delivers goods to some other party for some purpose, but in return, they receive some reward or compensation. For example, if I give my cycle for repair to the repair, cycle repair shop, so I give my cycle to the repairer, he will repair it. So my cycle is delivered to him for the purpose, and that purpose is repair. Then the cycle will be repaired. It will be returned to me. So obviously the repairer will not repair the cycle for me. Obviously he will ask for some reward or compensation, and I pay him so. So that becomes a non-gratuitous payment in which you reward or you compensate for the purpose. Clear? So on the basis of reward is gratuitous and non-gratuitous. Coming on to the on the basis of benefit. 
See, a contract of payment has already told you that there are two parties. One is the bailer and one is the bailee. The one who delivers the goods is known as bailer and the one to whom the goods are delivered is known as bailee. So on the basis of the benefits received by each of the parties, we have three types. First one is payment for the exclusion benefit of the bailer. What it means is that in the entire transaction, the benefit is availed only by the bailer. There is no benefit to the bailee. For an example, I own some jewelry and I am going out of town for a month. So keeping the jewelry at home will be a risky risk for me. It might be stolen. So what I do is that I ask my neighbors to keep my jewelry for one month with them till I return back. So are my neighbors getting any benefit out of it? No, they are not getting any benefit. It is me who is getting the benefit of safety that my jewelry will be kept safe for the one month by the time I am away from home. So this means that this payment is just for the exclusive benefit of the bailer. I am the bailer because that is my jewelry and I am delivering it to my neighbors. My neighbors are the baby, but they are not getting any benefit out of it. It is me who is being benefited. So that is the payment for the exclusive benefit of the bailer. Second is payment for the exclusive benefit of baby. This is what happens that the baby is benefited from the transaction of payment. Like for an example, if A and B are friends, so B needs A's car for going to Xoli. So what A does is, A gives his car to B for going to Xoli. Now A is not getting any benefit in this entire transaction. It is B who is getting the car, who is getting an opportunity to drive the car without any cost, without any compensation. And this only the baby is getting the benefit. So that is payment for the exclusive benefit of baby. Coming on to the third part, payment for the mutual benefit of bailer and baby. In this, both the parties are benefited. Like for an instance, if we say that when we give a piece of cloth to tailor for stitching, we are the tailor and the tailor is the baby because we are the one who are delivering the goods. And who the goods are delivered is the dealer, so he becomes the baby. Now, we get the benefit of stitching, and he, in exchange, he gets money for it. So, it is a win win situation for both of us. Like, he is getting his money, and I am getting my suit stitched. Both the parties are benefited, so that becomes payment for the mutual benefit of dealer and baby. I hope the types of payment is clear. There are two types on the basis of reward and on the basis of benefit. Moving on to the next slide. Essential elements of payment. Now, if you are clear with the definition of payment, the elements itself will be very much clear to you. Because the definition comprises of these four elements. Delivery of possession of goods, like you giving a suit for stitching, so you deliver a piece of cloth for a purpose, and the purpose is stitching upon a contract. It is based on the contract, contract of payment, return of goods. When the suit will be stitched, obviously the tailor will not keep his suit with himself. He will return it to you once it has been stitched. So there is return of goods. So there are four essential elements of contract of payment. First is delivery of possession of goods. Second is it is done for a purpose. Third is it is based upon a contract. Contract says that goods will be returned once the purpose is accomplished. So this was the basic about the contract of payment, its types and its essential elements. Now, moving on to one of the most important part you can say of this particular topic is the duties and rights of bailer and baby. Before starting with this topic, let's be clear with the difference between the meaning of duties and rights. Duties are 
जिम्मेदारियां क्या है और राइट राइट टू है कि हमारे हक क्या है हमारे अधिकार क्या है तो हम देखेंगे कि एक बेबी की और बेटर की क्या क्या हक होते हैं कॉन्ट्रैक्ट ऑफ पेरेंट में और क्या क्या उनके अधिकार होते हैं वी आर गोइंग टू स्टडी अबाउट द ड्यूटीज ऑफ बेबी आई होप बाय द टाइम वी रीच दिस स्लाइड यू रिमेंबर द मीनिंग ऑफ व्हाट इज द बेबी द वन टू व्हू द गुड्स आर डिलीवर्ड लाइक इफ यू गिव योर कार फॉर सर्विस तो द सर्विस सेंटर इज द बेबी If you get a suit for stretching, the tailor is the baby. If you get a cycle for repairs, the repair service provider is the baby. So duties of baby, like when your goods are kept with him, what is he supposed to take care of? What are the duties that he needs to perform while the goods are kept in his custody or under his consideration? First, there is duty to take reasonable care of goods. Section one fifty one and one fifty two. Now, if you give your suit for stitching to a tailor, and that suit gets stolen, or the rags create a hole in the piece of cloth, who is responsible? Obviously, the tailor is responsible because he was supposed to take reasonable care of the goods. So, first duty of tailor is to take reasonable care of the goods, just that he would have taken care of the goods if they were his own. मतलब कुछ का ऐसे ध्यान रखना है जैसे कि उसके अपने हो अदरवाइज हु इज रिस्पांसिबल फॉर द लॉस द बेबी सेकंड इज ड्यूटी नॉट टू मेक अन ऑथराइज्ड यूज ऑफ गुड्स द गुड्स व्हिच आर डिलीवर्ड टू द बेबी फॉर द पर्पस शुड नॉट बी अन ऑथराइज्डली यूज्ड बाय द बेबी फॉर एन एग्जांपल इफ यू हैव गिवन अ ड्रेस फॉर स्टिचिंग टू द टेलर What he does is, when the dress is stitched, he gives that dress to his daughter to wear in a function. Is that acceptable? Is that ethical? No, because it is his duty to not make unauthorized use of goods. उसको कुछ ऐसा नहीं करना है goods का जो unauthorized हो. Unauthorized मतलब जो चीज़ उसको allow नहीं है. आप tailor को goods दे रहे हो बनने के लिए और वो किसी और को दे रहे हैं आप इतना आ रहे हो वो goods. That is not acceptable, na? So, meaning that you can't have the goods to unauthorized use. Nahi karna. Third is duty not to mix the goods. Now, for example, if you give your car for service to your Hyundai show, what it does is to mix the two cars. Like two cars went for the service in the show. <coughs> so, what happens is. दोनों कार्स बिल्कुल आइडेंटिकल थी दोनों ने किसी और की कार आपको वापस कर दी और आप फाइव के जी डाइस विजुअल And that is pass on the seventy rupees per kg rice. What he does is he mixes it with a thirty five kg rupees uh, per kg rice. Is it right? Is it ethical? No. So the baby must not mix the goods that are delivered to him. Fourth is duty not to set up an adverse title. See, when we talk about title, it is about the ownership. This is something that is related to sales of goods act nineteen thirty. That only the owner of goods has the right to sell the goods. If the non-owner sells the goods to someone else, the bad title is passed. So we know that baby is not the owner of the good. Now, if I am giving my car for service to the showroom, they are not the owner. I am the owner now, so they should not sell it or pass it to anyone else. They do not have any. He right to pass on my car or give it on loan or do anything with it. So duty not to set up an adverse title. Fifth is duty to return back the goods. Now, once the suit is stitched by the tailor, it becomes his duty to return it back to me once the stitching is complete. It is his duty. And the last one is duty to return any injuries in the goods. Now let us study this by example. 
For an example, I have a dog. So I am going out of town for a month. What I have decided is that I will keep my dog with my neighbors for a month. So meanwhile, during that one month, the dog delivered a big dog. Okay. So when I will be back, will I get only the dog or he will be returned along with his baby? Both must be returned to me. So that is duty to return any increase to the goods. <coughs> Means when we deliver any goods to the baby for some purpose, and meanwhile the goods were kept with him, if there is any increase in that, there is any increment in that, increment must be returned to me along with the principal good. I hope you are clear with the duties of the baby. Now we are going to study about rights of baby. <coughs> rights of baby is first is enforcement of duties of the bearer. So whatever are the duties of the bearer, the baby has a right to enforce them. Means he can ask the bearer to perform all his duties diligently. Second is right to apply to court to stop delivery. Now, if I delivered my car to be my friend for some purpose, like he needed it to go in a marriage, so he asked me for my car and I gave it to him. When he came back to return that, one of my siblings said that this car belongs to me, not to her. Now, this creates a chaotic situation for me. We do not know. <laughs> to whom the car actually belongs because my sibling provided him with the fake papers of the car showing that the car belongs to him. So now B is in a dilemma whether the car belongs to me or my sibling. So what we can do is we can go to the court and ask the court to identify with who is the actual owner of the car. Till the time the court is able to decide upon that who is the actual owner, he can apply to court to stop the delivery and ask the court that he will not return the goods until or unless the court identifies who is the actual owner of the car. Clear? Third is right to sue a third party. So if A gives his car to B for some repair, okay, and C, a third party, creates any issue for B by doing the repair services. So B has the right to sue C. Means if any third party creates any issue for the baby while doing or accomplishing the purpose, the baby has the right to sue him. This right is available for the baby and we are both. <coughs> Next is indemnified for the loss due to defective title. Next is right to recover necessary expenses. Now this, let's go back to the example where I told you about that I kept my dog with my neighbor for one month. Now obviously my dog must have been fed with some food, which basic living expenses for one month because it is not easy to keep a dog for one month now. There must be some expenses that my neighbor must have income during that one month. So what is his right? He has the right to recover those expenses from me. अब अगर आप सुन सीखने के लिए दे दियो, उसके अगर कुछ डाय का खर्च होता है, कुछ लोन का खर्च होता है, तो टेलर आम से ले लेता है ना, because he has the right to recover those necessary expenses. And the last right is of right to lien. Right to lien means right to retain. If the tailor does not make a necessary payment to the baby, the baby has the right to retain the goods until the payment has been
So this was all about this lecture. We'll continue with the next topic in the